There are two ways to play Stardew Valley. Meticulously planning which crops to plant and when and where, your farm layout, build order, community center strategy, catching every fish, monster eradication goals, maxing your skills, completing the museum, maxing friendship, finishing every quest, and overall playing Stardew Valley like it's a spreadsheet. Or the wrong way. The other way to play Stardew Valley is the wrong way. Let's not beat around the bush. Stardew Valley marks a significant genre departure from my recent Dark Souls videos. And yet, it's a fantastic high skill ceiling game in its own right, and it is a perfect fit for my playing as intended series, as I'll spend the next this many minutes demonstrating. There are countless edges to gain in every interaction in this game, every moment of every day that when added up amount to gigantic efficiency gains. From simple things like placing your bed near the door so you can get to sleep faster at night, to convoluted cause and effect chains like growing a blobfish pond so can will like you. There are hundreds of ways to optimize your Stardew gaming. Now, calling this the intended way to play the game is tongue-in-cheek, obviously. It always has been. And yet, completion of the community center in year one is a difficult yet attainable goal, especially when played in this manner that feels like Stardew creator Concerned Ape did intend, evidenced by the checkbox you have when starting a new game that fixes the RNG so you can guarantee that it's possible. So what exactly is the goal of this video? Let's lay down some stakes. In a few words, this is a year one community center run while absolutely maximizing efficiency across all of the game's systems. Finishing the community center bundles is the nucleus of this run, the guiding star by which we will make all other decisions. There are also dozens of scripted quests that we will finish all of, mostly on the day that they are given unless there's an efficiency reason to wait. You'll never have a cleaner quest log than following along here. And like in Souls games, we want to maximize NPC content. In Stardew terms, that happens by befriending the villagers. We're going to fixate on giving everyone a beloved gift on their birthday. Then, because this game is open-ended, we're going to bound this video to just the first year. But it's not like I'm planning for the world to end on Winter 28. Everything we do will set us up for the future too, so that this save file could absolutely dominate the world economy in Year 2+. Plus. So the title of this video could be, Can I Complete the Community Center in Year 1 While Doing Every Quest, Gifting Everyone a Beloved Gift on Their Birthday, and Playing as Close to Economic Perfection as Humanly Possible with an Eye Towards 100%ing the Game in Year 2, or, simplified, Playing Stardew Valley as Concerned Ape Intended. If he was a spreadsheet. What is not included in this run? Well, obviously anything locked to Year 2 and onward. This includes a bunch of quests, the character Kent who only arrives in Year 2, and Trash Bear quests which start in Year 3. Ginger Island. We technically could make it there, but there's no reason to rush there with like one week to spare. Villager heart event cutscenes. Now I know we said we want to see the NPC content, but we're just going to enable them, not fixate on the time and place for viewing them all. Collections, such as shipping 15 of each crop or one of every shippable item. Year 1 is way too tight economically to fill out collections, but we take all the pressure off of completing them in Year 2. Gold farming tips. This is not a get rich guide. In fact, we make a ton of short sighted money losing moves in order to rush down the community center, such as owning any animals at all. Lastly, this video, despite being about completing the community center, is not instructions on completing it, per se. I'm not able to hold your hand on every item to store versus ship, or when and where to catch each individual fish, etc. Doing so would add an unpleasant amount of time to this video. Instead, this video focuses more on timing and sequencing of upgrades that will support you in completing the community center. I won't tell you, store one large white egg, and one large brown egg, and one duck egg, and one large milk, and one large goat milk, then turn them in on summer 20th to complete the animal bundle. But I might say, upgrade your coop by summer 8th, then upgrade your barn by summer 11th to complete the animal bundle before spending cash on the steel axe, which you still need to do sometime before the end of summer, if that makes sense. There's entirely too much entropy in this game for me to micromanage your inventory. I think that's enough, let's start the game. Create your character. Sex and choice of pet do not matter, but farm layout very much does. Forest farm is a strong winner for reasons we will see, though honorable mention would go to Riverland farm because extra early game fishing money goes a long way. Spring first is of course a flurry. Clear out and till 15 spots where our starter parsnips, plus a few more cause we're gonna buy some seeds from Pierre. It's critical to get one cauliflower, green bean, and potato planted today that we will not sell. The next best thing you can do is earn 50 wood and craft a chest to break the chains of minuscule inventory. Energy is a big limiter in early days, but scything weeds doesn't spend energy and does occasionally yield mixed seeds, which grows a random seasonal crop. These can be a huge cash boost early on, and the forest farm spawns a special type of weed that's guaranteed to drop a mixed seeds. Then store the items you can and make a huge meandering loop foraging and meeting every villager you see. Hitting the mountains is especially helpful because they tend to produce the less common forage items. We want to collect all four forage items before bundles open up on the 6th, but if we can collect a second copy of each before that, 
and level up foraging skill to 1 by cutting some trees, we can flip those into 10 spring seeds and get more income baking in the ground like Icelandic volcano bread. I was able to hit foraging 1 in one day thanks to trees and pickups. On spring 2, let's go to the beach. Beach, let's go get away. Take a meandering path on your way there to hunt forage items and spring onions, then Willy gifts us a bamboo pole at the beach. Then fish the day away, refreshing your energy on onions. Some of your fish are going to be used in bundles, but we can recatch those. Ship them all tonight because cash is king early on. The morning rain is scripted to always cloud up our window on spring 3, offering us a reprieve from the suffocating daily watering burden. Today is a great time to fish and clear trees. Keep an eye out for forage items too. Avoid fishing in the rainy river because catfish will be uncatchable at this point. Instead, the beach is a nice spot since if your inventory fills up, you can sell fish straight to Willy. Spring 4 would be Kent's birthday, but who is Kent? Must be off on a ride with Barbie girls. Fish is such a strong early game cash source, but it doesn't scale how farming does. If you ever find a bubbling spot though, drop everything and fish like your life depends on it, especially this early on. Then two things today. We have a lot of cash from yesterday's fish, so buy new seeds to plant. And we really want to go to bed tonight with the four foraging items. They're only due on the 6th, but tomorrow will be very busy. On spring 5 or 6, Marnie should come by with your pet. Say yes to adopting it and pet it every day since that does have gameplay implications later. The mines open up today, but we're a little busy because our initial parsnips are up now. Harvest one and complete that quest for an infusion of 100 gold. Then rush down to gift Shane a parsnip as he leaves his house. Higher quality if you have one. Gifting someone completes a quest for another free 100 G, but we do want Shane points too. Entering town on the 5th triggers the community center to open. It's not usable yet though. Enter it now and check out the illegible bundle spot for the rat problem quest to complete. Then hit up Pierre to flip parsnips, saving one for another Shane gift tomorrow. The shipping bin is much more convenient for selling, but bringing your produce straight to Pierre gets us that cash a day early, which can make a big difference compounded over time. It means we can rebuy an armload of seeds and get them in the ground today rather than tomorrow, which makes the next batch earlier, etc, etc. And note on seed choice. Following the gold per day ratios on the wiki is naive and unhelpful until the very late game when your only limit is farmable land. Truly, the game rewards planting diverse crops. Every crop has a reason. Even kale, which isn't in any bundles or quests, has the best XP ratio. And parsnips may have lower gold per day, but making a smaller profit sooner allows you to reinvest that money sooner. Don't spend all your earnings on seeds though because we're getting a fiberglass pole today. If you have an artifact from hoeing the worm spots or fishing, bring that to the museum because your first turn in is worth a cool 250. All these quests today helped get us to the sale price for the pole plus a couple of bait. Plant your seeds, then summon fish to the dish, although I like the Chalet Suisse. Clint visits you the morning after you acquire a copper ore. Even though I didn't visit the mines yesterday, I actually got ore from a fishing chest, so Clint visited today anyway. Once you level up farming, there's a quest to make a scarecrow. Do that for a quick 100G. Then the community center actually opens on the 6th. There's mail from Wizard, and after visiting him, we can complete bundles. So flip your spring foraging into 30 spring seeds and get those planted. Note because it's a Saturday. Foraged items clear and reset on Saturday night. So if you haven't visited, say, the beach or mountain all week, it can be lucrative to pass by today. Do hold on to one each of the crab pot things if you find them for bundling, but sell the rest. Yeah, I want to dance with somebody, with somebody named Shane. The flower dance is on spring 24 and you need four hearts with any bachelor or bachelorette to dance with them. It's worth reaching for because dancing gives you a further free heart with that partner. Shane and Haley both have birthdays before the dance, but Shane is much, much easier to gift on a consistent basis until then. Shane is very clearly the intended partner for Flower Dance, so we're going to ply him with double weekly parsnips. Gifting limits, like foraging, reset on Saturday night. Sundays are important for two reasons. Watch Queen of Sauce on TV in the morning for a cooking recipe, which today is stir fry. Then starting today, the traveling cart visits the forest on Sundays and Fridays. It's critical to check every time until she sells us a red cabbage or seeds, but that's not all to look out for. A sturgeon, tiger trout, or walleye each make fishing bundles completable in spring. A coconut or sunflower before spring 14 is our best shot at getting Haley a loved gift for her birthday. We should also snap up any iridium ore she sells, and an early cheap coffee bean planted now could pay off pretty well too. We want two Marnie hearts before summer 3rd, so add her to the gifting rotation. Convenient while we're down here doing cart checks anyway. And today is Lewis's birthday. He would love a hot pepper, but that's a summer thing, so settle for a backup vegetable. Fish or mine with the rest of your day. I believe the mountain lake is generally the most lucrative spot on sunny days. The exceptions to that will be when rain brings catfish to the rivers, or in summer at night when super cucumbers buff the ocean EV. With that, it's been one week. 
of the video with some value demonstrated, I will entreat you to click like on the video and consider subscribing if you're enjoying the content. Thanks to you lovely individuals, I actually reached 10,000 subs since my last video. I'm sincerely moved that y'all identify with my content of basically playing games neurotically while making cheap references, and I would love your continued help getting my work out to a wider audience. Since taking this channel seriously earlier this year, there have been some ups and downs. I've struggled to find success outside of a specific series of Dark Souls videos, and those aren't going to last forever, so frankly, I'm heading into a big unknown as I dip my toes into other content. Stardew Valley is a game I have loved for years, so regardless of the numbers, I am happy I get to work on this. I still read every comment, and I appreciate the encouragement, and I'm going to do my best to live up to it. Thank you for your consideration. Alonzi. If you've ever dipped your toes in the Stardew metagame, you know Spring 13 is a very important day because you can acquire strawberry seeds. Monday the 8th is the last day we should be spending money on other seeds because we want all the cash we can get on Strawberry Day. Parsnips planted today will be up on the 12th, in time to sell them before the 13th. Otherwise, we're not on much of a script today. I continue to push fishing pretty hard in my free time these early days. The cash is helpful and a lucky treasure chest this early could be a dramatic swing in your fortunes. Spring 9 marks our second major parsnip harvest from the seeds we replanted on the 5th. I've been fishing so aggressively that I woke up today at fishing level 5 and chose the Fisher perk, whose boost to fish sale value further reinforces fishing as the best use of my free time. The non-farming activities you can choose are tree cutting, which runs down energy very fast, mining, which also runs down energy and has few direct material benefits right now, or fishing, which is a reliable few hundred gold per day and can self-sustain infinitely. Anyway, remember to occasionally bring your geodes and donations to Clint and Gunther. If you can get five donations to the museum, Gunther rewards you with nine cauliflower seeds, which is a kingly gift this early. Spring 10 rained, which is a godsend for beginner farmers. My fishing bar was big enough now to realistically catch catfish, making it quite profitable to fish in the river on a rainy day. Yes, we need one catfish for a bundle, but we'll get another later, so just take the profit. It's also Vincent's birthday. With very lucky beach foraging, you could have crab pots by now and a beloved snail to give him. Otherwise, fall back on a high quality daffodil. Birthday gifts get eight times the friendship points, but the extra points for a gold quality liked gift aren't far behind a normal quality loved gift. Robin quests us to find her axe on spring 11, which I'm happy to just slam today for 250 gold. With some mining under our belt now, we should have the stuff to tap two or three trees, prioritizing a maple and an oak. Saturday this week, a festival ruins gifting, so Shane Parsnips must happen today and tomorrow. Then I finally had 2k kicking around for an upgraded backpack and decided to grab that. Now I'm broke but I'm happy, I'm poor but I'm kind. Thanks to Spring Onions, energy levels are pretty high today, but I still had to be boring and fish to recover from my greedy backpack purchase. Friday the 12th means cart visit. I had to decline a coconut for Haley's birthday because the price was wrong for someone saving up for strawberries. Parsnip Shane and Marnie both though. Now that cash is sort of stable, we can start saving bundlefish as we catch them. Many fish reoccur season to season, but do make sure to get anything that's spring specific. Now, I haven't been felling trees much this run because it doesn't directly affect money or bundle completion, so my wood on hand has hovered pretty close to zero. But today, I was able to squeeze together 300 wood to repair the beach bridge. We can't forge there tomorrow, so going today is nice, and we were rewarded with some sellable items and progress on the crab pot bundle. Scrambling for wood today had the further benefit of amassing sap so we can fertilize the strawberries we're going to plant. Tomorrow will be so busy, you should get a head start today by tilling and fertilizing some spots. Some of these will disappear, but any that stay are money in the bank. The 13th is Strawberry Reckoning. For every 100 gold we hold, have a spot tilled and watered before going to the festival. Leave 20 of them unfertilized though, we're going to big brain it. See that cauliflower we planted on spring 1 is up today, and the reward for turning in the spring crops bundle is 20 speed grow, which means 3 instead of 2 harvests for those strawberry plants, and it's very worth it. At the egg festival, smoke Abigail to win the egg hunt, then we bankrupt ourselves for strawberry seeds. The festival spits us out on the farm at 10pm, but we can run back to the community center now, dunk those crops for speed grow, and get all the strawberries planted by bedtime. Sunday 14 means Queen of Sauce for coleslaw and a cart visit. Again, we literally cannot skip cart checks until we end up with a red cabbage because it might only be offered one time this year. It's Haley's birthday, but blowing 1k on a coconut is not in the budget, so she gets a gold daffodil. Then we're absolutely dying on watering crops, but luckily there's rain tomorrow, and I was able to just barely scrounge 2k by pierring some produce, and I got the copper watering can ordered with Clint. Did a beach check and found our final piece for the crab pot bundle, whose reward is crab pots. I set these up on our farm pond for a nice income of junk fish for recipes and junk junk for recycling. 
On the 15th through 18th, all around the world, salmon berries for me. Who knows how long I've loved you. Hopefully you hit foraging four by now, which makes these bushes each yield an additional berry. It feels like a waste of time, but doing a huge berry loop each day can leave you at 400 berries and fix low energy throughout the summer into fall. Then this is our first day where we can actually focus on mining, cause nothing in this world belongs to me but my love. Mine, all mine, all mine. The mines don't have a strong gold payoff, but they make abstract museum progress, and finishing the boiler room bundles to activate the mine carts will be a huge mobility payoff later. On Tuesday 16, aside from berries, pick up our copper watering can and get today's watering done right after. I promise it's too easy to mess up if you try to be clever and water just before bedtime. Today is also the final day to plant cauliflower, and we do need a gold one, so I bought 18 seeds on the way home and made sure they were fertilized. Then, it's kind of late to start mining, so I cleared more of the farm. Before salmon berries, this really was not feasible. Wednesday 17 is berries, and still a suffocating water burden, but the new can makes a huge difference. I don't know if this holds on console, but on Mac, you always want to do your watering vertically for efficiency, because if you're charging up water to any diagonal, it will always prefer to aim the line up and down versus left to right. The afternoon is yours. I did some geode museum work and ended up with an ancient seed to plop down, then mined more. Thursday 18 is the final berry day, and I ordered my copper pickaxe. It's also Pam's birthday. She loves parsnip, which is easy enough. Shane gifts get even cheaper now because we can make him happy with salmon berries. The rest of the day I fished because that pickaxe left me broke. In theory, we're running at maximum efficiency if we're always running our resources down to zero, but it's scary to have no money. On Friday the 19th, Jody mails for a cauliflower that I was happy to offer up today. Then my parsnip stock actually ended up kind of low, so I bought another batch of those to plant, then fished the pain away. Remember the cart. Saturday 20th has one task, Shane's birthday. But the rainy morning is perfect for mining, so I mined hard early, then left at the early hour of 10pm to find Shane in the saloon for a birthday gift. It's funny, he still hates me and says stuff like, haven't I been mean enough to you that you'll leave me alone? But this one beloved birthday gift was exactly what we need to be able to ask him to dance in a few days. Sunday spring 21st is the end of week 3. Queen of Sauce teaches radish salad and there's a big strawberry harvest today. Check the cart and parsnip marnie while we're down there. Let's talk iridium now since the cart today had ore for sale. Stardew asked you for close to 80 iridium bars, which is 400 ore if you want all of its one-time uses, like tools and buildings. Then if you want anything bonus, like crystallaria or desert warp totems, you'll need more than 80. This video doesn't get into the true Iridium Hungry stuff, but we will want a ton of it in year 2, so many of the choices I make are in service of future Iridium access. If you're not a sweaty gamer who feels confident in the Skull Caverns, I actually get you set up with most of the non-cavern Iridium sources if you follow along, and the cart is one of those. Iridium is also why you'll see me take the pirate perk and use treasure hunters when fishing. On the 22nd, Demetrius set up my choice of mushroom or fruit bat cave. Fruit is just correct. It helps with year one bundles, and pomegranates are one of the better Elliot gifts for a while. Now let's justify the forest farm even more moral. Moral. Mo moral is a rare secret woods forage item, but it can appear on this farm too. Then if you get one cave carrot from the mines and stick a tapper on each of the three main tree types, that's the exotic foraging bundle done. We turned that in yesterday, which yields five autumn's bounty. After watering today, popping an Autumn's Bounty refreshes us completely and adds a foraging buff on top, setting us up to go Hexus mode today and absolutely ruin the trees on the farm and forest. For the first time all game, I can make it through my farm without serpentining to dodge saplings. Several thousand wood are going to be required before mid-fall. I kind of consider every Robin building a pretty sad use of money. It takes a miserably long time for a coop to pay for itself, and dealing with animals each day just steals fishing time. But woe is me, a max level barn and coop are required to finish the community center. And we can't just wait till fall when we're rich to slam these because Robin's time is actually a resource that can be limiting. All that is to say, I'd rather leave the trees intact, but I'm being forced to kill them for bundles. A copper axe would be helpful with this gathering, but summer is coming soon. You can bet, I made a little worksheet calculating our needs for seeds, hot pursuit, and the goal is exactly 12,450 gold, so we're not gonna buy convenience upgrades until we earn that. Spring 23rd is the final day to buy parsnip seeds since Pierre is closed on Wednesdays, though technically they could be planted tomorrow. After that, we won't need our hoe until summer, so I got a copper hoe started. Then I hit the mines, where I reached 40 and started the long road to the dust sprite eradication goal. Killing 500 dust sprites yields the burglar ring, which doubles monster drops and actually has a huge economic impact. It's impossible to justify farming anywhere in the mine besides dust sprite floors because having the ring first just turbocharges all other mining you could do. However, we will dip to floor 120 first before returning to farm on 40 because that puts the lava katana up for sale and enables all monsters a very low chance to drop prismatic shards. 
We've been generous enough to Shane through now that he will dance with us for a free heart. Don't worry, we can ignore him after this. By the way, I played this game without music to gather footage, but there are plenty of musical cutscenes like this that get really awkward in silence. Spring 25 is the first time I can pick a crop and not replant it. It's very freeing. Today I swallowed my pride, choked on the rinds, and ordered a coop from Robin. Then we're already close to the mines, so that's a natural transition. Spring 26 is Pierre's birthday. His loves are strictly year two things, so he gets a gold dandelion. Let me introduce you to the gift chest. This is where you amass little piles of everyone's loved gifts that you don't want to sell. Aside from birthdays, plus the early Shane and Marnie pressure, don't bother gifting anyone, but do stock this chest for later. We will gift everyone in batches. The cart sold me a sandfish, which means I can complete the fish tank without visiting the desert. I don't want this guide to rely on random occurrences, so don't worry, we still hit the desert on time and get the chance to fish one normally. We're still parsnipping Marnie, and it was a blessed rainy day, so I slammed catfish for money. I brought these to Willy before he closed and flipped them for the best rod, which allows the use of tackle, but I foolishly bought a treasure hunter instead of a dressed spinner. It's just a sequencing issue, it makes more sense to use the higher bite rate one first to rush fishing level 10, and then with the pirate perk you can use treasure hunters to reliably amass booty. Spring 27 is Emily's birthday, so bring her a Gemily. It's also a Saturday, making it a generally nice day to forage, and as the second to last day of spring, no watering will need doing tomorrow, so it's a good watering can upgrade day if you haven't. Sunday the 28th is the final day of spring. Our cauliflower is up, remember to save a gold one. Check the cart, parsnip Marnie, and our coop is done today, so buy one of each chicken from her. After Marnie says to pick a home for your chicken of a certain color, you can actually cancel out and re-roll for the other color. This is only important for chickens since bundles actually do require a large egg of each color. This spending left me at only 6k of the 12.5 we want tomorrow, so looks like we locked ourselves into another fishing day. Luckily it was raining, so I made bank on catfish, but I don't think my iridium rod was actually a smart investment this early. As of the end of spring, we've completed the spring foraging, exotic foraging, spring crops, crab pot, and blacksmith's bundles. Pickaxe, watering can, and hoe have all been upgraded to copper, and all we got built was a level 1 coop. Farming is level 7, mining and combat got neglected at 4, Foraging is on track at 5, and fishing has clearly been overdone because that's at 9. Apparently Spring 28 is the day that Gerard Way leaves you a phantom to lead you in the summer. Summer 1st is a huge planting day, obviously. Scythe down your strawberry trash and hoe at least the whole front field. I snuck up to Robin to start a silo so that I can turn my excess grass into animal fodder, stopped by Joja for sunflower seeds since those are actually cheaper there than Pierre's, then finished our seed buy at Pierre's. We need to grow quality hot pepper and sunflowers for gifting, low quality corn for bundles and cooking, high quality melons for cash and bundles, speed grown hops for beer, and like one tomato. I did some wheat too because it's cheap. Then I realized I was sitting on the last bits of geologists and adventurers bundles, so I turned those in to activate minecarts. Stonks. Summer 2 brings excellent news. A storm approaches. I watered, turned in some incomplete bundle pieces I had lying around, and brought Clint my geodes and a steel watering can order. Then just spent the day fishing super cucumbers for cash, saving one to stick in a fish pond. Summer 3rd was a chill, beautiful storm day. The mayor sent a letter asking us to find his shorts, and because we've been parsnipping Marnie for weeks, we're permitted to retrieve those from her bedroom and turn that in today for a quick 750. I nabbed a rainy day red snapper for bundles, then took a ride on the new minecarts and mined all evening. Summer 4 is a little busy. We have to hit up Clint for a watering can, so I got the copper axe started when we were there. It's also Jazz's birthday. She's picky, and the best we can do by now is a liked gold daffodil. I ended up near the beach, so I grabbed a pufferfish who's kind of specific, needing a summer, sunny day, ocean, between noon and 4pm. I would love an octopus for fish ponding as another iridium source, but we're not prepared for that battle today. Friday 5 is uneventful. Wheat is up, so replant that with summer seeds. We need two sturgeon and two largemouth bass, each for a bundle and another thing, so do some lake fishing for those. Here's another benefit of the forest farm. Wood skip is normally catchable in the secret woods, requiring a steel axe to get to. Embarrassing, considering I still don't have my copper axe. But the forest farm's pond can give wood skip too. I got a lot of trash, but trash is honestly good for me at this point. Tangent time? Tangent time. So, cloth is perversely hard to acquire in this game. The mill is so cheap to build except for its 4 cloth requirement and it's needed to start turning wheat into flour or milling rice. One cloth is needed in a bundle and it also goes into crafting dressed spinner which is comically expensive at this point in the game. So if there's one thing I might courageously venture to call a mistake in Stardew Valley, it's the impossibleness of early game cloth. All that is to say, soggy newspapers are freaking valuable as recycling machines have a 10% chance to turn them into cloth. 
The days are starting to be cozy and uneventful. Even with a whole field of crops, the steel watering can makes our mornings not so bad. In our free time, we're pulled in many directions. There's time pressure to get Robin buildings going, which wants cash, but also wood, which doesn't generate any money. We want the four dwarf scrolls before his birthday, since you can't gift him without speaking his language, but some of those scrolls want you to hunt on specific levels of the mines, and we would rather get dust sprites eradicated first. Do your best. Summer 7, Queen of Sauce teaches baked fish. The cart had a walleye, which completes the night fishing bundle early for a small glow ring. Now finishing this bundle on time in fall is way too late for a small glow ring to be relevant, so that's a little sus, but it worked out nicely for me. The last forest farm benefit is revealed today, as with our copper axe we can cut down these stumps for hardwood, which completes the construction bundle, and hardwood goes into a lot of recipes and buildings. Feeling poor, I fished today in the lake, but it is worth going to the ocean at 6pm for super cucumbers to come out. This batch finally got us to fishing 10 and 6,000 in cash. Summer 8 is a very full day. A fairy visit boosted a huge chunk of crops last night for me, so I replaced those with melon seeds. It's Gus's birthday. The only reasonable year one love for him is orange if you get one from the fruit bat cave. We got one of those, but blew it on a bundle so he gets a gold parsnip instead. By the way, check Gus's rotating food stock when it's convenient. Mine had three salmon dinners today, which are a rare Alex love, which is otherwise not attainable before his birthday. Then I cleared space for a fish pond, ordered the pond with Robin, fished on mine floor 20 for a ghost fish, and turned in the specialty fish bundle for 5 dish o the sea, a food which gives a massive fishing buff. Guard these. We're going to allow one apiece for octopus, lava eel, scorpion carp, and the summer and winter legendary fish. On summer 9, our sunflowers are up. Save the golds and silvers for Haley who loves them, but they're also decent gifts for Pierre, Alex, and Gus whose loves are hard or impossible on year 1. Speaking Dorvish by his birthday on summer 22 is looking jeopardized at this point since we have no scrolls yet, so I said a prayer and hit the mines today. I woke up on summer 10 with a goal. Today will be octopus day. Call it fish and impossible. Craft a trap bobber, then only do partial crop care this morning until we can snipe Maru on the way out of her bedroom with a birthday strawberry. Then blow a beach totem to maximize fishing time since octopus only shows up through 1pm. With a dish of the sea buff and our trap bobber, we will catch one as long as we can hook it, because they are pretty rare. I actually caught two, but it's worth restarting this day if 1pm passes without one biting. Then I sold some junk fish direct to Willy to afford a steel pickaxe upgrade from Clint's on my way home. Yeah, there was a lot of leaving my farm with 5 metal bars in the morning just in case on this run. With our pickaxe tied up, it's a good evening to replenish wood, which has been near zero ever since ordering our coop. Oh, and our first fish pond is ready. Stick in a sturgeon. I don't really want a sturgeon pond long term, but we do need one caviar, so we can evict them for better fish as soon as they give us a single row. Thursday, summer 10 is another day that I get to feel clever. That gold cauliflower we planted on spring 16 and saved since the 28th? It's going in the Luau Potluck today, as pretty much the only best outcome ingredient that you can reasonably submit in year one. This gives a nice chunk of friendship with every villager. Aside from that, at this point I've now cut down a lot of my trees, so I did a huge replanting operation. Clumping them up like this will only allow some of them to grow at a time, but I figure I can just play whack-a-mole. Summer 12 through 14 are a weird low stakes special event where the ocean is green and there's supposed to be better forage items on the beach. I mean, it had some okay things today, but within normal amounts, I would not advise planning your day around this. Then, awkwardly timed, my cart actually had a caviar for sale, so I wasted the cash on that in order to clean out my sturgeon pond sooner and replace with a better fish. Then, mine down to 90 today, and finally replaced the Neptune's glaive I had gotten for free from an early fishing chest. Summer 13 marks harvest day for the initial melon batch, meaning huge cash. It's time for the last backpack upgrade, and loads of new seeds. Today is scripted to always storm, by the way, so let the rain fall down. I'm coming clean. This is also Alex's birthday. Now, his loves are not guaranteed possible year one, but I have those salmon dinners. Once those are gone, he's going to be getting gold sunflowers. Then, pushed to 100 in the mines for a star drop, filling my head with thoughts of efficiency. Summer 14, Queen of Sauce teaches pancakes, which will be our Jody gifts once we upgrade the house to have a kitchen. Today is our first normal blueberry harvest, meaning even more cash. Pam mails us a quest for a pale ale, which is actually perfect timing because we just hit farming 8 last night to learn the keg recipe. It's like the game new. Keep checking the cart for cabbage, but with fall coming and good cash flow now, it's also time to start buying up her rare seeds. By the way, a note on fish ponds. So super cucumber, octopus, and lava eel each can give little trickles of iridium ore. None of this will bear fruit for a long time, and it's honestly questionable value, so fish ponds are one aspect of this video you may not want to replicate, unless you really just cannot handle the skull cavern for iridium. How do I have so much to say every day? It's gonna go faster now, I promise.
On summer 15, we start our steel axe, which is going to be required sometime before summer ends. I also sprung for fish pond 2 from Robin, we got some good geode breaks and museum donation progress, then pushed mines down to floor 110. The only thing interesting about summer 16 is it's the final day to plant melons. With the mine almost to the end, today I pushed to floor 120, which got the skull key and made monster slaying slightly more valuable across the board. Summer 17 is Sam's birthday. He's easy enough because we can buy beloved pizza from the saloon and force it on him at work. Steel Axe is ready and I started my long journey to 500 dust sprite farming today. Summer 18 is pretty blank. I had some spare land I filled with radishes. Then I started cutting down trees because I realized we still need a few thousand wood. Summer 19, Demetrius' birthday. He loves strawberries like Maru, so bring two and hit them both. I also brought Robin some spaghetti from Gus because I didn't want her to feel left out. Then I initiated the barn, and of course a stupid seed fell last night and made me have to place the barn weird. Watering has been much less of an issue recently, so I started clearing out the western fields in preparation to plant them in fall. Summer 20, Demetrius quests us for a melon. First, I forage the beach since being a Saturday, it's stocked up. Then I bring Dima his melon and a bonus strawberry because I'm nice. Grab summer spangle seeds as loved gifts for Caroline. This is the final and perhaps best day to plant these since they are not a great ROI. It's also the final day to initiate a steel pickaxe upgrade in time for Dorf's birthday if you haven't yet. I still don't find the scrolls in time, but I tried today. Sunday, Summer 21, Queen of Sauce teaches Maki Roll, a need for bundles. My cart sold me a large goat milk, meaning I can complete the animal bundle on Koop alone, but we still need a maxed out barn for truffles. Today is the final slash best day for poppies, for Penny, similar to yesterday's Spangles. Now, I was hoping the bat cave would be decidedly fruitier. It's been really disappointing so far, giving mostly crap forage berries. I was hoping it would give three apples for the fodder bundle, but that just was not happening, so I grabbed life by the horns and planted an apple sapling today with enough time to yield us three apples before the end of fall. Summer 22 is a big blueberry harvest. The barn is up, meaning we could get a cow now if Marnie were in her dang shop. Feel free to laugh at me, the king of efficiency, for not planning my entire life around Marnie's lazy ass, but yeah, turns out it makes less sense to buy barn and coop upgrades on a Saturday or Sunday. Good news though, tomorrow is forecasted a storm, and we just hit 10k for our gold watering can upgrade. Then, while we're down here, hit the beach for Crimson Fish Day. Feels appropriate on the final week of summer. You know the deal, Trap Bobber and Dish of the Sea. I nailed this thing on my first cast, then switched out for a treasure hunter and spent the rest of the day getting paid in fish while gambling for treasure. This is also the final day for planting radishes if you're doing that, and this is Dorf's birthday. Rip the dream. If you have him unlocked, Topaz is the best gem to give him, since the other gems all have a better use or cost more. Now, Fall 14 is the absolute final day to initiate a max level barn upgrade to get truffles in year one in time for the community center. So we need to keep Robin almost on cooldown then across house upgrade one, coop two, coop three, barn two, and barn three. You shouldn't be able to order buildings on a Tuesday, but the fact that it's raining actually kept Robin available for me. I ordered Coop 2, then hated on Dust Sprites for Burglar Ring progress. And here's a Goblin Mode tip from Mothi. With any free land today or tomorrow, plant wheat just to tie down fertilized land across seasons. Since wheat is both a summer and fall crop, leaving harvestable wheat in the ground from summer 28 over to fall 1 leaves the ground tilled and fertilized and it's very easy to scythe away on fall 1. Mothy Dunn chase Willy down through the hall, but laugh Willy laugh, he don't care at all. The 24th is Willy's birthday. Buy cows and a milk pail on the way to town. Our gold watering can is up, then gift Willy a mead we had fermented last night. We could have preserved a catfish from spring, but man, 500 gold was a big deal back then. It was this point I did napkin math for fall seeds and decided the correct amount is 22.5 thousand. Considering the buildings we also need, we are mad cash hungry, so I just took fish from the water for the rest of the day. Summer 25, our coop is done. Still have to buy a duck, but in the meantime, I got a dinosaur egg incubating. You should always use your first dinosaur egg to incubate, then give your first one that your dino lays to the museum in order to have your cake and eat it too. Now I know we need a lot of money on fall one, but I said screw it and got barn two ordered today. George will mail to request a hot pepper that I brought him directly. So that barn upgrade put us back to zero wood, but I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. I absolutely annihilated trees today and replanted a huge mass in that little unfarmable strand below our pond. Oh, and before summer ends, do pay a visit to the secret woods to get a fiddlehead fern. Friday 26th is another day that's scripted to always storm in anybody's game. If you haven't forgotten to water your blueberries, you can stop watering them after today because this will be their final harvest. I'm still hitting the cart to check for a red cab for cutie, and we need to buy a duck so I bring Marnie a parsnip like the good old days. Then fish if you need cash, but I just worked on dust sprites. I also brought along a battery to place in the tonal wall to kick off the Mr. Key quest. Summer 27, pretty blank. It's always pretty calm once we fall into routine each season and have caught all the seasonal fish. I woke up today to Gunther handing us the sewer key. 
This might happen slightly sooner for you, but I felt like we made pretty steady museum progress, so your sewer should also hit around the end of summer. Wood is still super critical, so I wiped out the railroad after I carried a rainbow shell up there for the Mr. Key quest, then mined. And Sunday the 28th, of course, our final day of summer. Queen of Sauce teaches bread. Now we only need to water our crops that are going to live through to fall, which is a good reason to plant each crop in chunks that are the shape of your watering can. I did hit my fall one cash goal thanks to one more good harvest today. My cart had more iridium ore, then I raised the forest yet again, ending at 1200 wood, which should this time last me for more than a single building upgrade. Tonight is the Moonlight Jelly Festival, which has no material benefits except the chance to speak to each villager for the smallest friendship boost. And at least this one only steals two hours of your day. As of summer's end, fishing and farming are level 10, foraging hit 8 thanks to some huge deforestation days, and mining and combat are still a little neglected at 7. We only just opened the sewer, and I still don't know Dorvish. Our watering can is gold, hoe is still copper, and the other tools are steel. House is at level 1, coop and barn are at 2, and we have two fish ponds invested in iridium for later. Bundles completed include summer foraging, summer crops, construction, artisan, lake fish, ocean fish, night fishing, specialty fish, geologists, adventurers, and 5k. And slamming the gas on robin buildings when I did was absolutely correct. That all comes due so fast, and we're only just getting started. We need to spend 37.5k still on vault bundles for desert access before Sandy's birthday on fall 15, get barn 3 going by the 14th, and have house 1 done by Jody's birthday on fall 11. Jeez, remember when we could spend our cash on tools? Fall 1 as the start of any season is chaos. The wheat plan caused about as much chaos as it saved since I did it piecemeal, but in theory, it's a good idea. We need pumpkins and yams for bundles, amaranth for quests, and fairy rose for gifting. Then cranberries make good cash. Make sure to use up the 30 quality fertilizer we basically purchased with the 5k bundle. It is worth planting a few chunks of mixed seeds in fall, which should give us the one eggplant that we care about. They can actually also yield artichokes, even though those are normally a year 2 vegetable. Tuesday Fall 2 is when the Special Orders board shows up in town. These are special larger quests that do require intent and effort to complete, but many of them give significant rewards. A new one can be picked up each Monday, and you can have multiple going at once. A subset of the possible quests here are non-repeating, so you should always prioritize these, especially if they correspond to activities you were planning to take anyway, like mining or chopping wood. For this run, I always took a new quest on Monday and completed it, but because the quests are random, I won't base any plans off of this. What's not random is that today is a nice day to catch the new fall-specific bundlefish. It's also Penny's birthday, so bring her a gold star poppy. Marnie mails us for Amaranth on Fall 3. Now usually these quests give you the chance to have gotten the thing first. Marnie is really jumping the gun here since the earliest possible Amaranth is still days out. And where the heck is Hazelnut? Fall Foraging is taking a while for me to complete just cause I can't find a dang Hazelnut. Be careful of synths. It's Fall Out. 4. Turning in our Fall Bundlefish completes the fish tank for our second Junimo star. The prize is the Copper Pan, which can be another trickle of Iridium. Then have Robin start upgrading our house. Yes, barn or coop is more critical for bundles, but our girl Jody needs us to cook her pancakes by fall 11, and this is how we unlock a stove. Fall 5 is Elliot's birthday. I brought him a pomegranate from the bat cave, but squid ink from enemy drops is also feasible. This is our first Friday we've had the sewer open. Krobus sells a single iridium sprinkler for 10k each Friday, which is a much better source than wasting our precious iridium bars that we still don't even have yet. But I'm a little embarrassed for funds today, so we'll start that next week. Instead, focused on dust sprites, and finally find a hazelnut to turn in fall foraging. Saturday 6 is completely free. I speed grew my amaranth plots since that sneaks an extra harvest for them, so I brought one of those to Marnie today to close her quest. Then just mine. I'm almost halfway on dust sprites. Queen of Sauce this Sunday teaches tortilla, and our house upgrade is finished, so I moved some milk and eggs to the fridge and cooked up a fried egg for bundling. It also means I can cook farmer's lunches with saved parsnips all the way from spring as our first source of Marnie loved gifts. Dinner is dust sprite leftovers again. Hope you're hungry. For nothing. Now, our bed used to be close to the door, and I'm not liking how it has moved farther away with this upgrade, especially with this narrow hallway that could catch you and ruin a 1.50am bedtime. Well, that's not a problem if we stick our bed back to the entrance. Perfect. Fall 8 kicks off blackberry season, which behaves similarly to spring's salmonberry days. I'm less excited about wasting days on blackberries since energy levels aren't as much of an issue now, but I'm happy to fill Linus's quest to retrieve his basket. Pick up a new special order because it's Monday. Tuesday 9 had rain, and nothing to replant. Replanting is the downside of faster growing crops, but until you're farming level 10, you want the XP, so eh. I decided to go for Fall's legendary fish today, the Angler. This one is by far the easiest legendary fish to catch. It's like they expected it to be your first, even before summers. Then, as usual, the evening was spent in the mines. 
Yesterday's angler plus the fish I caught in the attempt were worth a ton of money, so I have 25k today to get barn 3 started with 4 whole days to spare. Phew. Our next big hurdle is buying out the vault bundle for 37.5k before the 13th. Thank goodness we have pumpkins due up before that. Then mines yet again. I'm stuck hunting bugs for my special order, so I will say that special orders tend to be a hit to your income. I recommend keeping a checklist of special orders and maybe easing up on them once you've done most of the non-repeating ones. By the way, let's talk profession perks. Farming very clearly benefits from tiller for crop value, then agriculturalist for crop speed in the early game. Artisan might be worth changing to with a full wine cellar in year two. Mining went geologist into excavator, which yields more geodes with an eye toward early museum completion and better iridium. I feel strongest about this one for purposes of this video. Foraging goes to gatherer, then botanist. With a barn full of pigs, that's crazy money just lying on the ground every day. Plus, we grow a lot of the free seasonal seeds that benefit. Fishing goes to fisher for more money, then pirate for treasure until we're set on artifacts. And combat, who cares? Fall 11 is Jody's birthday. We did just get our kitchen to make pancakes, but in a pinch you could just buy the 2.5k vault bundle for 3 chocolate cakes, which she also loves. Today I dabbled in a small gift loop since I had to gift Jody anyway. Now a gift loop involves gathering a loved item for every single villager who you're not maxed with from your gift chest and Santa Clausing your way around town handing everybody presents. Tracking everyone's location each day is impossible, but if you know some general patterns you should be able to get 90% of your gifts delivered. I also turned in the final dwarf scroll today to finally learn dwarfish 17 days late. Even giving two loved gifts a week for the rest of the year won't max out the dwarf's friendship, but we will do our best. Fall 12 is a huge day. Pumpkins are up, so we need to flip them for seeds with Pierre, but save one to bundle. Buy seeds, then submit the pumpkin to close out the pantry for a third Junimo star and unlock the greenhouse. Then our big barn is done, so we need a pig from Marnie, and of course check the cart. Fall 13 is a day of cash reckoning. We gotta wake up with 37.5 thousand tomorrow, so do what you need to do, including selling off gems and crops that you were holding, fishing like mad, and turning in outstanding quests. It's also Abigail's birthday, so bring her an amethyst. Now I woke up on Sunday 14 with just under 35k, but bok choy came in clutch and got us just short of goal. Then I had to cha-cha slide it and sell exactly one hop this time to cross the threshold and finish the vault for almost exactsies. Y'all, it's no joke how tight the timing is on buildings, museum, mines, and bundles for year one. It's balanced with amazing care. The fact of how tight this all is honestly justifies this video idea a lot more in my head. Monday 15 is Sandy's birthday, which is why we worked our ass off for desert bus access today. But we want some cash on hand today too, so visit Pierre to flip some crops in the morning. This is our final day to buy fairy rose seeds, though they can still be planted tomorrow, but still leave money for a bus ticket plus seeds that Sandy sells. We've got gas in the tank, cash in the bank, and a bad little mama with her ass in my face. Bring Sandy a sweet pea, and Emily actually visits her today too, so bring a gem for Gemily. Then buy a junk of beet seeds, which are both a cheap source of sugar and a beloved gift for Evelyn. Sometimes you might skip digging an artifact spot if time is short or your inventory is full. Well, don't skip that in the desert ever. There are a few unique artifacts here that you should take every chance to find. Also, this is when you would normally catch a sandfish and complete the fish tank. Then, while we're here, we can open the skull cavern and dip our toes in. I did look into a few iridium on floor 1 from purple slimes, but it's clear my damage output is pitiful and the lava katana should be the bare minimum to proceed here. Fall 16 is the Stardew Valley Fair, where normally you'd want to bring your 9 best items and blah blah blah. Well, going to the fair without a display prepared is fine, but going without the gold for a single star token is less forgivable. I did the free strength test for a single token, then gambled again and again and again, up to 2800 for the star drop and rare crow. Then for laughs, I had Lewis judge my high effort display, and it turns out even coming in last is worth 50 star tokens, which would have saved me like 10 minutes of gambling. Oops. Back home, I finally set up my little greenhouse with ancient seeds, coffee, and my leftover out of season seeds. Fall 17 is a nice all-around value day. Expensive crops are kickstarting financial recovery post-vault. Wow, this really is Fallout. I started a steel hoe and a new fish pond, and gifted the nerd family, Linus, and the dwarf while I was up in those parts, then mined in the evening. Thurs 18 is Marnie's birthday. After a long spring of dosing her with parsnips, she gets a proper loved farmer's lunch for her birthday. Then, because I was in gifting mode anyway, I did a whole gift loop. Gift loops are fun because you can usually expect three pieces of mail the next morning from everyone reciprocating. Fall 19 was rain, hallelujah. Caroline mails to request a pumpkin, but we will wait until Sunday and include that on a gifting loop. Checking the cart, and bingo. Red cabbage, not even in seed form, finally. We're finally free from cart checks after today, but there's no reason not to keep looking for iridium if we're in the forest anyway. 
10k gets an Iridium Sprinkler, then I picked up Steel Ho and initiated Gold Pickaxe. That's honestly late given we've entered Skull Cavern already, but tight wallets on a year one community center run just cannot tolerate tool upgrades the way that a relaxed playthrough can. Then what's there to do on a rainy day, sans pickaxe, but fish? I ate a dish of the sea and fished on mine level 100 for a lava eel. That's an excellent fish for our third pond, with good odds to give multiple spicy eel or magma geodes. I actually got one in just a few casts, so I rode out the fishing buff at the mountain lake. I caught a largemouth bass, which reminded me that I can bring that to Jody's house at 7pm for that quest. On fall 20, I finally held two cloth from recycling, plus two wool from sheep, so I made a loom with eyes on building the mill soon. Then with my pickaxe still in holding, I did a massive gift loop again. Every single person got loves except Alex, Pierre, and Gus, whose picky tastes got them nice flowers. Elliot, whom I missed, and Harvey too, who holds up by like 3pm most days and generally tries to avoid you. Sunday 21 is Robin's birthday. I've been bringing her plates of cold spaghetti from the saloon. Then, cause we're in the area anyway, why not buy another fish pond? This one is destined for blobfish, but I'll toss in Dorado in the meantime since the row is good value. Queen of Sauce taught glazed yams, then I slew dust sprites. Around 350 now. On Monday Fall 22, our pig is adult and making truffles, with 6 whole days to spare. Now if you want to get married this year, turn your second truffle into oil and craft a rain totem. Spoiler, I uh, I didn't realize I should do this. Today also marks the last week of the season, which means green tea plants produce each day if you care to visit Caroline's sunroom and collect a leaf. Monday means special orders too. Since I want to keep focusing on dust sprites, I grabbed one related to killing slimes so that I could double dip progress. On the 23rd, our second big batch of pumpkins came up, which when sold to Pierre got me the cash for a coop 3. We do still need this for rabbit's feet. Alas, it's a Tuesday, so I had to snipe Robin at her desk in the evening to start the upgrade. Waiting till tomorrow should have been fine too. Fall 24, we've got George's birthday, and we're still giving him gold and silver leaks that I saved from spring. Then, as is becoming normal, I made his birthday completely unspecial by gifting the rest of the world too. Happy birthday to the ground! Welcome to the real world, jackass. <clears throat> Uh, the 25th is a cozy day. The only interesting thing is it's a suboptimal day to start a tool upgrade since the festival on the 27th means it takes three, not two days. So I'll point out our weekly tasks now that we have a routine. Friday is cart, iridium sprinkler, and gifting loop. Saturday is gifting loop and forage. Sunday is queen of sauce, cart, and it will become our quarry day. Monday is special order board. By elimination, that makes Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday our chillest days of the week while playing Stardew Valley. Fall 26. With pigs now making truffles, I could just buy rice at any point and cook a maki roll to complete the chef's bundle, but I have way too much pride for that. Nah, we're gonna buy the mill to finally process this unmilled rice I've been holding since spring. Then complete a gift loop today since the festival tomorrow prevents gifting. Saturday 27 is cozy again. Take care of the farm, cut some wood with our nice new gold axe, then hit the Spirits E festival around 11pm. The only value is the gold pumpkin we can sell for 5k, and the rare crow we have to buy for exactly 5k. Sunday the 28th is our final day of fall. Queen of Sauce teaches artichoke dip, then it's still the old season, but it's a new week, so this is a good gifting loop day since we will be very busy with start of season things for a few days. When you reach Marnie, grab a second heater for your coop for the coming winter. You should already have one heater from the fodder bundle. Okay, fall's over and that was a very intense season. Our money, wood supply, and Robin's time were all stretched to the brink. Foraging and mining increased to 9 and combat only increased to 8 despite our best efforts on dust sprites. Bundles completed here were fall foraging, fall crops, river fish, fodder, 2.5k, 10k, and 25k. Like I said earlier, this video is not a money making guide per se, but we do still want several million gold to max things out post community center so I will gently guide us that way for one more season. Pickaxe, axe, and watering can are gold with hoe at steel, and we finally started doing trash can which is now at copper. Winter 1 begins a season of questing, gifting, and mining. Winter foraging is very easy to turn in since crystal fruit and winter root should have come long ago as mine loot. All you need to find is a crocus, then you can till soil until you find a snow yam to complete the bundle. Don't forget Krobus' birthday. I've been giving him his wild horseradish saved from spring, but pumpkins work too. And on the way to him, grab a special order. You're officially forgiven for not completing this one if it doesn't work out. Boop. That was the forgiveness. It's rough at the start of a season. Going to the beach, I hit Willy's six star crab event, but more on that later. Then check the beach for Nautilus Shell, the second of two winter specific bundle ingredients. This could complete the community center for you if you got rather lucky with a rabbit's foot by now. Looking back, I would move my Coop 3 upgrade as early as possible to maximize rabbit's foot odds earlier. Finally, if you meet the shadowy figure at the playground, they unlock secret notes to start appearing as you perform most tasks. 
Winter 2 is full of mail. Robin tells us the wood chipper is available now, which we don't care about, and Willy quests us to catch a squid. Our quarry is finally open since we finished the crafts room yesterday, so we're going to clear that out. Bring along those cherry bombs you've been amassing from mine loot. With the quarry packed wall to wall, these are way more fun than your pickaxe. I needed 14 cherry bombs to fully clear it. Now I've been petting my dog every day, and today I was finally notified he loves me. Good boy, chapstick. Wednesday the 3rd is Linus's birthday, so I decided to mine in the morning. And today was the day. I finally slew my 500 thus sprite and claimed the burglar ring, which may as well be glued to my finger now. Don't forget to yam the hobo after mining though. Then with any cash, pay a visit to the saloon, cause for three days after that willy cutscene with the crab infestation, Gus sells an unlimited amount of crab cakes for 550 a pop. Believe me when I say, blow all of your money on these. Popping one for breakfast gives you a speed buff that lasts the entire day with a defense buff tacked on top. You'll see me cracked out on crab cakes for most of the rest of this footage. Thursday 4 is our first kind of free day this season. I had to craft a glowstone ring to combine light and magnetism since burglar ring kicked out one of those other slots. Then I just scaled up my economy using some materials I'd been amassing. More preserves jars to keep up with my row income, collected my milled rice to craft a maki roll, and realized I can be turning my crab pot fish into sashimi so I can stop munching gold hops when I need hit points. Oh sashimi, they don't believe me, but you won't let those serpents eat me. I ordered a steel trash can and a fifth and final fish pond, then worked on other monster eradication goals that only now make sense to pursue with the burglar ring on for double loot. You can tell a huge difference immediately. I decided not to eat a crab cake on the 5th because I wanted to eat a dish of the sea instead and catch a glacier fish. Which is a big brain play, cause if we then rush to the sewer, the buff is still active to also catch the legendary mutant carp. And cause it's a Friday, we can then buy an iridium sprinkler also in the sewer. Then I just did a gift loop. Winter 6 has one thing and it was awesome. Clint mails us to ask us to bring Emily and Amethyst on his behalf. And this could not have worked out worse for him. See, completing that quest gives a heart not with Clint, but with Emily, which actually put me and Emily at the eight heart limit. So not only does that mean that we can bouquet her to begin dating, but I did this super publicly at the saloon in front of everyone. Get demolished, Clint. So yeah, big reveal, I've decided on Emily as the optimal wife. So romantic, I know. Based on a purely economic standpoint, most of the male bachelors make bad spouses. Then Maru as a spouse can gift us farm warp totems and bombs, but also has trash. Krobus can give us lucky lunch, but also trash. Haley has nothing too special, but at the same time, she offers no trash since all her gifts are cooked foods which have a pretty high floor. But I went with Emily because she can do Omni Geodes, which is another non-cavern source of Iridium ores, however infrequent and roundabout. She cooks okay too. Sunday the 7th has plum pudding on TV, and with an influx of cash I picked up several more goats. Ancient fruit wine is one of the best things we can put in casks eventually, but goat cheese is the very clear other best cask item. Then it's Caroline's birthday, so spangle her like the star banner. It always feels great with these multicolor flowers to use up the last one in a stack. Sunday is my quarry clear day, and there was enough time to go for the golden scythe in the quarry dungeon too. On winter 8, we uh, skipped the festival. On purpose. This one's midday, so it ruins our entire day, and all you get from it is two fishing tackles. We can do way better than two fishing tackles with a whole day. I hit the desert and did some baby's first skull cavern, i.e. not using the power gamer depth rush iridium strats. There are, after all, serpent and mummy eradication goals to work on, and even a trickle of iridium makes a big difference this early. And lucky me, a rabbit's foot even dropped, which completes the community center before my coop even got the chance to. In a pretty direct way, the dust sprite farming that I did actually completed my final bundle. Winter 9, I completed the final bundle. Now here's a critical mothy efficiency tip. Finishing the community center awards two friendship hearts with everyone, so the actual cap you should be aiming for before this is two hearts shy of their maximum. My exception was I did take care to max out and bouquet Emily before completing the center, expecting this to fill in her now unlocked 9th and 10th hearts, but it looks like the game is coded to not count this friendship reward toward your dating points. Boo. The day after finishing the community center is a flurry, so pull up your pants. For one, it's totally Sebastian's birthday, which I missed, but we've been frozen tearing him on gift loops. More importantly, hold on to a void mayo if you can get one, void essence and pumpkin for gifts, and potentially a dressed spinner and a trap bobber. Entering town triggers the community center completion cutscene and the friendship hearts. Then enter the railroad for a cutscene, hit the sewers to pumpkin Krobus, and then talk to him which opens the mutant bug lair. Dressed spinner goes on the rod, and you fish here for a slime jack, which is an easy catch but a low bite rate, like a 128k mp3 off of limewire. 
grab the Dark Talisman, return to the Railroad Cave, and fish there too with Trap Bobber on now because Void Salmon is a tougher catch. Make sure it's at least gold and save this one. If you don't have Void Mayo, it will also let you fish one up here. Find the henchman and give him a void mayo, then grab the wizard's ink and skedaddle. It's late by now and there's no pressure to turn in the ink today because there's actually a scripted quest to bring wizard a void essence this Friday and I can double dip that. Thursday 11 is back to chill city, population me. With the comm center open, there's mail from Pierre that he's now open on Wednesdays, and mail from Willie that his back room with the boat is accessible. This unlocks Ginger Island as soon as we want to cough up 5 iridium bars to fix the boat, but we have better use for our first 17-ish iridium bars at least. I just hit the mines today for non-dust sprite monster eradications. So I have this monster musk recipe from the prismatic jelly special order and I highly encourage you to choose that quest as soon as it comes up. Musk costing 30 slime and 30 batwing doubles monster spawns on each mine floor. Combined with a crab cake for speed, I call this turbo mining and it yields mad loot. Hordes of monsters make staircases so common you can practically mine without touching your pickaxe. Even the slimes and batwings just about pay for themselves each time. Okay, Friday the 12th. We hit Foraging 10 last night, which is the single best skill level up in the game. All our foraged items being iridium quality is sort of cool, but the true prize is how foraged items now only occupy a single stack instead of wasting three inventory slots per. Wizard always quests you for a Void Essence today, so I bring that Quest Void Essence, plus a Gift Void Essence, and his Magic Ink for an unprecedented triple turn-in. A theoretical quad or even five could be achieved with a special order and the normal notice board then just gift loop because we haven't yet this week. Winter 13, we do some targeted gifting, because once you've done a few loops, you'll end up with some asymmetric friendships just through missing some people, handing some people likes versus loves, doing other quests, etc. It's important to identify your laggards and take special effort to gift them and perhaps prioritize them at the expense of higher friendship people. For me, Harvey is behind because I haven't wanted to ruin my days running to his stupid clinic before 3pm to gift his shut-in ass. And everyone probably has Sandy behind. Don't be shy about wasting 500 gold on a bus ticket just to drop off a sweet pea, especially now that we're foraging 10 because Iridium Cactus Fruit is actually an amazing health restorative. Sunday 14 has the chocolate cake recipe on TV. It's a piece of cake to bake a pretty cake, if you do the cooking by the book. It's Harvey's birthday and a new week, so why not a third consecutive gifting loop? Today I finally maxed Emily at 10, so marriage would be on the table, except it doesn't rain in winter, so we cannot buy her the mermaid pendant. Big sad. Emily is much more of a spring wedding type anyway, and that's only half a season away. Winter 15 marks the first day of the night market. Bring a dressed spinner today, cause throughput is key on submarine fishing. Whatever you're doing at 4.30, stop it, grab a special order on the way, and enter the beach for the night market. I wasted two hours watching a silent mermaid show just to grab a pearl I don't think I need, then hopped on the submarine and luckily pulled up all three fish tonight. They're not tough catches, but the bite rate can be low for blobfish. If you have been faithfully checking the traveling cart and still haven't gotten red cabbage, make sure to check her boat at the night market, because this will basically be your last chance for year one community center. Because I completed my night market stuff in one visit, Tuesday the 16th is completely free. Otherwise, you can try again for the fish. My blob is safely at home in my fifth fish pond. He doesn't help with iridium, he's just a cute little fellow. I just turbo mine today working on eradication goals. Winter 17 is the final day of night market. It's also the wizard's birthday, and a scripted Clint quest for... One iron bar. I did a gifting loop, plus that iron bar, plus started a gold hoe, and finished with special order progress in the evening. On Thursday 18, we get mail telling us who our secret Santa will be. Unfortunately, mine was just Pam, who's already friendship maxed. Then, here's a mothy efficiency tip. Sandy sells Deluxe Speed Grow on Thursdays for only 80 gold compared to Pierre's 150, and this is the final usable Thursday of the year, so let's make it a desert day. It just so happens that luck was very high for me today, so I went all in, popping a lucky lunch, converting 1000 stone to staircases, and bringing my whole stock of normal bombs to go as deep as possible. I ended up with 57 iridium ore, dwarfing all my collected iridium so far in just one trip. But here's another tip that will take a while to pay off. So it's tempting to shove diamond in your crystallarium, but I've had jade baking in mine for weeks now. The desert trader will give you staircases for jade on Sundays, so the pro move is to store up 100 jades, cash them all in for stairs, then just race your way to floor 100 in the skull cavern before you even look twice at the screen. Then, of course, just ignore your pickaxe and bomb because that's way faster to clear rocks. Doing this just once on a lucky day can net you hundreds of iridium. That said, the best use of your first few iridium might be to create more crystallaria and pop jades in them over upgrading your pickaxe. 
Friday the 19th means Iridium Sprinkler. Also, pigs are the one animal I like as an income source, especially when their truffles are all Iridium thanks to foraging perks. So any pigs purchased today will reach adulthood exactly in time to be productive members of society come spring 1, so I sold my redundant sheep and a few goats to make room for pig replacements. Winter 20 is pretty chill, highlighted only by Evelyn's birthday. I brought her a beat after wasting all morning breaking geodes and doing museum stuff, then finished with turbo mining. Certain missing museum minerals are much more likely to come out of certain types of geodes, so you can take a look at what you're missing and spearfish for the right kind of geodes. For me, that meant I needed some frozen ones. On Winter 21, we learn how to make pumpkin pie on TV, and Robin will mail asking for 10 hardwood. I gotta say, there's distinctly less urgency on these kind of quests when you're at max hearts with a person. It's a new week though, so we're doing a gifting loop anyway, and I may as well toss in the hardwood. Sunday also means quarry trip, then just keep on turbo mining for those eradication goals. Man, crab cakes are like, the best thing to happen to me. Winter 22, as the final week of the season, means Caroline's sunroom has free tea leaves. And as a Monday, claim a special order. I was blessed with Fragments of the Past, a non-repeating quest to get 100 bone fragments. A shame then, that I just ordered an Iridium pickaxe from Clint. Or is it? I'm not a quitter. I headed to the farm, converted some copper and iron ores into bombs, then popped a monster musk and hit mines floor 71 without a pickaxe. And y'all. The musk not only turbo boosted bone fragment collection, but the extra monsters made all of my staircases for me. I was fully mining without a pickaxe and it was awesome. Bombs were just reserved for emergency clearing of diamond nodes or blocked hallways, and I sprinted through the special order in one day without a pickaxe. Okay, two notes about winter 23rd. One, it's Leah's birthday, so do a gift loop. I've been giving her old salads I bought in bulk from Gus like 40 days ago. Two, it's a bad day to submit a tool upgrade since the coming festival makes it take three days not to. I know that's minor, but this edge case crap is the lifeblood of these videos. Winter 24 is a quiet Christmas Eve. I finally amassed 50k liquid without an imminent need for it, so today I got Robin started on house upgrade 2, which will be a nursery for my eventual children with Emily, then turbo mining. At this point, I'm feeling overdue for prismatic shards. The first one would go to the museum, the second one would become a galaxy sword, the third would complete the missing bundle without needing a wine cellar, and the fourth needs to get shipped to eventually get the ship one of everything achievement. So I'm focusing most on mine floors 100 plus where I might find a mystic stone. Spoiler, no prismatic shards happen in this video, but I did finally finish void spirit eradication today, meaning there's no longer a reason to visit the regular mines since slimes can also be done in Skull Cavern. Winter 25 is the Feast of the Winter Star, i.e. Christmas. I've never explicitly mentioned this yet, but for those festivals that throw away a chunk of the day on you, it's optimal to enter them as close to the last minute as possible. It's totally not a good use of time to even go to this one, but I can't skip Christmas. Pam would be so sad. I gave her a pity parsnip, then received my own gift of 12 basic eggs from Marnie. Honestly, not bad. I cook with these. The festival spits us out at 10pm, which would be hard to get value from on any other farm, but the Forest Farms Pond can host midnight carps from 10 to 2am in fall and winter, so the timing is perfect to grab a few of these for cooking. Winter 26 is Clint's birthday, but we're already maxed with him, so we're going to ignore it. Clint is a bit of a sad loser, so ignoring his birthday is canonical anyway. <laughs> is that too mean? Then this is our final Iridium Sprinkler Friday before the new year. Gus mails for an albacore, but I would rather focus on Sandy who's harder to befriend, so I took a low pressure desert trip to gift her, collect forage items, and dig artifact spots. Also with spring approaching, nab at least 15 rhubarb seeds from her to set up the polyculture achievement in year 2. Winter 27, I just made another desert day for Sandy and some low stress skull caverning for serpent, dinosaur, and mummy eradication progress. And Sunday, Winter 28 is the final day of our year. There's pressure to grab that albacore for Gus since otherwise they won't come back until fall. Then while we're doing errands, one of our secret notes wants us to check this bush by the playground at exactly noon on the final day of a season for a cute piece of furniture. Pop geodes, clear the quarry, and relax with a well-earned evening off. Tend your processing machines. As a mothy efficiency note, remember how we let wheat roll over from summer to fall to keep the ground tilled and fertilized? You can actually accomplish this from winter into spring as well, which can save a ton of effort on spring 1, by planting fiber seeds 7 days earlier. But that recipe is a special order reward, so I don't canonize that strategy here. Plus, we'll be fine anyway with gold tools. Let's do a winter wrap up, winter wrap up, cause tomorrow spring is here. How did we do, according to the goals of this video? 
In just one year, we managed to complete the community center, max every skill, and complete every mines monster eradication goal except the 1000 slimes. We caught every fish except Spring's Legend who is impossible, the Ginger Island fish, and the Ocean Crab Pot ones. We shipped a special order every week since they became available, including six of them that were non-repeating. Tools all made it to gold, plus pickaxe at Iridium. The museum is missing four artifacts and two minerals, one of which is Prismatic Shard. This category is very RNG. Friendship is maxed with most people. Pierre, Jazz, Sandy, and Sebastian are all missing two or fewer hearts, and Dorf is missing three due to our late unlock of his language making us miss his birthday. Kent, when he shows up in year two, has the gall to still have inaccessible loves, so we might be blowing rabbit's feet and pearls from our blobfish pond on him. Speaking of fish ponds, we also have two octopus ponds, lava eel, and super cucumber, each at high-ish levels ready to trickle in iridium ore. With that, we've completed one pretty good year of Stardew Valley as Concerned Ape intended. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I had meant to film a shorter video as a break after the last few, and uh, this wasn't that. I know I had less density of jokes this time, because there was so much content to cover, and I might have made a lot of people mad who were expecting to see Bloodborne. And that is coming soon, I promise, but I'll have to play something after the Souls games dry up, so this is me testing the waters. Thank you so much for watching through to the end. Please let me know what you thought in the comments. If y'all enjoyed this despite the genre shift, I would be pleased to eventually make a year two slash post game follow up video. And again, thank y'all so much for 10k. I am blown away. This is my first video since crossing that line and it's the best Christmas gift that I could ask for. Do please hit the appropriate buttons if you had a good time too. I'm planning out what I want to do with channel memberships or maybe a Patreon and I'll try to have news about that in the coming months. I hope you all have lovely holidays and a happy new year. I'll catch you in 2024. See you later, alligator.